just a good old boy. Well, we're gonna be looking at this sprayer. It's been a while since I did an update on it. Uh, quite a good while. Uh, and this is kind of what I've come up with. Uh, so I used garage door springs for the return. Um, I come up with this disc. I was gonna do a half moon I talked about earlier, but I realized to do what I was wanting to do to get it returned, it was easier to take a garage door spring, put it out there, make a full moon, and that way this will wrap as that one pulls. So this is my pull cable here. It's attached to the same point that the return cable is that's connected to the garage door uh, spring. So as this pulls, it'll pull this around and extend it. And that garage door spring will pull it back. And then I come up with these stops and I put mounted rubber on them <coughs> to keep it from hitting too hard. Um, I didn't want too much spring tension on it, but I wanted just enough to where it would slowly pull or constantly keep it pulled back. Because as this cable releases, as the booms close, it will ease off the pressure and it'll allow that thing to close. Now let's go over here and, uh, <coughs> or well, let's try it with this one and I can show y'all exactly how this is going to work. So I've got this cable here hooked, let pull it a little tighter, to this boom arm right here. So as I fold this boom arm out, watch that one over there. And you can see it actually work. So we're pulling this boom arm out. As you can see, it's opening. Opening up. All right, well that spring over there is stretched. So now I'm gonna come back in and it hit my grinder post, but it would normally pull all the way back in over there. So that's how it's gonna work. Um, <clears throat> what I did was I mounted two pulleys right here and I went to those discs I made that's got a pin that goes down. The pin is welded to the hinges that are attached to the extensions. That's what makes it turn. And the cable comes back up here to these pulleys. It goes across. Now I got about probably weld me some D-rings or some small ones on or something wherever I decide these need to be mounted right here. Um, and that's what will open these open uh, these up. I can't figure out exactly where it needs to be till I get it outside and it's raining today. Um, I'm going to do this thing. See it comes back around. It'll just pull itself in. Uh, it's got rubber bushings on it. This one here might need tightening up just a little bit. Um, but they don't have any grease on them. That's another thing. I haven't put any grease on these yet because I'm going to paint it. Once I get some grease on it, these things are going to be smooth as silk going in and out. Um, mounted the boom arm cylinders. Uh, one of them. I've got to get another one to go over there. I haven't got it yet. But that I did have this one over there when I set those. Um, all that's right. they got to be welded. They're tacked on. Um, <clears throat> and now i got the cylinder set for that. Uh, so the booms are pretty well done. Uh, I've got all the pieces made to put the nozzles on. I went ahead and made the pieces, as y'all remember in the video. Got junk piled everywhere from this project. Every time I put something up, I need something else. So I just started leaving it out, and now I've got a damn mess. Um, but I made all these for. I got to clean them up still, and I got U bolts to mount those onto the arms for the nozzles to mount onto all the way down uh, because this is an inch and a half tubing versus inch and a quarter and they do not make nozzle holders uh, for inch and a half tubing. Now back here the only thing I've got left to do uh, as far as mounting nozzles back here is I've got to get a piece of inch and a quarter the length of this and come off of this just a little bit and weld it on uh, which is no big deal. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see, then, now this frame, what we're gonna be starting today, I ain't got the steel, I've gotta go get it. Uh, I've got to completely redo this frame. Um, don't want to, but I've got to. Well, not completely redo it, partially redo it. Um, the problem I've run into is there's a cylinder 
for the center. It's a three and a half by eight uh, cylinder. Uh, the problem I've run into with that is it's too high. I don't like how high it is. It's not that it won't work. It's just higher than I want. I want more ability to get lower and then it's got enough movement to get me to the height I want to be at. So what I have decided to do, uh, I went ahead and just mocked this up to see what it looked like. I didn't, I didn't really care for it. Um, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to come right here and right there and we'll cut this tube out. Uh, and then I'm going to take the same tubing and run it this way. I got to go get a little bit more of it. Run a stick this way, a stick that way. Then I'm going to cut pieces to go in here on each side to kind of square me out a square there for the cylinder to fit up into. And I'm going to put the mount for the cylinder right here. And uh, I'm also going to run pieces from here to here, which will add support to this. <clears throat> so, as it pushes down downward pressure with those pieces in here, it'll push inward on itself. So that should strengthen it there. Any twisting too, it should help. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be as stout as this here is, unfortunately. But it's the only way I could come up with to get it to work right now. I thought about coming inside of here, laying another piece of channel, mounting the cylinder right in here, right on this side. I didn't like that idea because it was going to put these at a bind when they slide up and down. And I wasn't crazy about that. I really need to be directly below, um, which these pieces are off. I really need to be, well, they're, they're getting cut off anyway, rebound. Uh, I really need to be directly underneath this piece of tubing to keep the balance on this right when these booms are folded out. Obviously, it's tilted forward because the booms are forward. But when they're out and it's sliding up and down so it won't bind, uh, it needs to be center mounted. All right, I got the booms off. And yes, you can set them off by hand. They ain't that heavy. But I know they look, do look probably intimidating on camera that they're extremely heavy, but they're not that bad. Um, <coughs> Make sure y'all see what I'm doing down here. Not really. Uh, I'm always trying to find something to put y'all on. I need my tripod. Oh, lucky day it's out here. Lucky day. Hold on. Let's cut all this out. Probably footage, I mean. Alright. Let's set up a tripod. Alright. Now y'all should be able to see everything I'm doing now. I gotta have my tape measure. What do it? There it is. Lose my head. What attach my shoulders. Okay. Um I've got to find a center on this piece here and then I got to make my measurements on exactly how wide I want all this. Uh, so we're at 47 and a half from tube to tube. Um, so that center that lines up with my block so I know I'm somewhat right. Now, let's uh, Let's mark this thing at five inches on this side because I want 10 inches of clearance. That's what I figured I was going to need in order to make my hose lines clear when I get them hooked up to the cylinder and everything. Now the tubing is two and a half inches thick. So I got to cut out there. This is going to be from inside to inside. So once I run the piece long ways, we've got to take out the width of this to get that to be 10 inches. So my end product, when I get done making this thing, I want it to be 
10 inches right between here. So I gotta take out my tubing uh, width, which is two and a half. So we're gonna take out two and a half right there. Right there's the mark. That is where I'm gonna wanna cut. So I'm gonna write cut in the arrow. So that way I don't forget the way my memory's getting anymore from all the crap I've got going on. So much rattling around up there. I better write it down. Cut. So we're gonna cut at that mark. Now, when I cut here, that's gonna take that whole piece out, but I, don't forget now, I'm gonna be running pieces across this way. So when I run them, then that's gonna give me my 10 inch gap exactly. The reason why I need a 10 inch gap, again, is because the, the hoses on that cylinder, when it's mounted, will mount to the side. So if I put a 90 on it, That'll leave me enough room for the 90 to clear and a hose with a little bit extra, which is really what I want. I want a little bit extra. I don't want it to be close. Uh, and that'll split between both of these uh, pieces to mount my cylinders on. And uh, everything. So we need to get that cut out <coughs> right quick. All right. I want to make sure this thing's square when I cut it. So we're going to mark that right there. I don't know if y'all can see it. Mark and I can see it perfectly fine. It's probably a little bit harder to see on camera. Boy, it just looks crooked as a dog leg. There we go. All right. Now. Got me a little bit of something to go by to make sure I don't get it too bad off. It ain't got to be exactly perfect. Because I'll use my magnets to re-square it up and weld it. But the better, more closer it is, the better. There we go. Try out this good uh, Harbor Freight saw again. difficult to get this thing to fit. The only bad thing about it. I guess I could have used a cutting disc and grind it. It's just a lot quicker and easier to use this thing if I can get it in there. I got it in there though. You know, oh, there you are. Yeah, with the dipstick side of me just come out. It'd been a lot easier to cut that if I just took that thing off and then cut it. But I guess that made too much sense. Duh. Well, I got uh, everything cut. Now, this is the way the cylinder is going to be mounted, just like this. Um, I've got my pieces cut to go here, which is these, to slide in there. That'll be the support from there up and down. Then I had to make some changes to the uh, original idea I had. Um, <clears throat> I'm still going to be using the two inch or two and a half inch tubing on the inside right here um, there's going to be enough space to put a 90 degree elbow for the hoses to keep them out of the way and then on the ends i ran into a snag i went and measured the tank to make sure that i was going to have enough space uh, 
between there and the tape once it's in there and it was tight uh, it was going to clear but it was going to be tight so what I did is I decided to use channel um, in case when I get the tank full of water it kind of expands a little bit um, I've used channel and I'm going to take and we're going to use it on the end to cap it instead of the tubing uh, which worked out anyway because I had the channel um, saved me from having to go buy any more steel <coughs> uh, I actually had enough way it worked out I uh, just cut this piece off of the one that I had welded on there or that I welded on there um, then the ears I noticed with the ears and the cylinders what the length I had them at was going to be a little bit too close for comfort so I went ahead and whacked them off and shortened them up a little bit everything should still work as far as the fold out and everything it looked like the cylinders would have just enough room right up again this when they're fully extended um, to work and those clear the tank because the tank is rounded it kind of goes in so it looks like everything's going to clear when I get it all obviously we won't know till we put the tank on after I get everything done but uh, from the measurements and the way it looks it looks like I'll be okay uh, I'll be a little bit tight but it should work now I went ahead and I took uh, inch and a quarter tubing I went and got this piece uh, I've got to mount it a long ways across the back here for uh, to put the nozzles on because this is two and a half inch I mean I'm not going to make clamps for that it was just easier just to get a stick an inch and a quarter um, and I made little extensions little four inch extensions so that'll give me enough room once I get my channel on for it to clear um, and still put nozzles on and then it'll also kick it out far enough past the actual frame of the sprayer to make sure that on a windy day uh, the nozzles still have enough clearance to make the spray go all the way to the ground without it if it say it's blowing up behind me blowing it into the sprayer um, that's one reason why I like booms uh, versus boomless we do have a uh, one of the other sprayer has a boomless uh, set up on it along with the booms for spraying underneath trees and stuff um, for weeds and some of the fields that we've had in the past um, and uh, <clears throat> we use it the problem with boomless is for me I have to continuously spray we have so much ground we try to get over for nearly every day uh, as long as it ain't raining um, and the temps are right uh, I cannot stop because of wind uh, for the most part unless it's really whipping and then I have no choice even with booms uh, with boomless if you get a kind of windy day and a gust of wind comes along it'll hit the the sprays that's coming out and it'll blow it away and you'll have a huge streak out in the middle of your field with booms it's more tolerant to windy days than boomless is um, so that if that you're wondering why we don't use boomless that's why I'm not saying that boomless is is bad but for our circumstances booms are way better for us um, and we have tried both so that's why I choose to use booms um, now <clears throat> That's got that box and the pieces on, so that should have the. So, uh, now we got to go weld it all up down at the shop, and then I'll have this part knocked out, and then we can put the booms back on and see how everything's going to work, um, and do final details before paint. But that'll be the next video, but we'll go weld this together right now. It's just tacked together out of finish welding it up but that'll be what it'll look like it'll be boxed just like that around outside that cylinder to give it its support back I know a lot of y'all probably think well that channel is probably not gonna be as stout as that tubing well it I don't know it, it probably won't be quite as stout but it is channel so it is a little bit thicker uh, than the uh, tubing is so it's a little bit heavier steel than that um i don't know it's going to be kind of close um like i said it probably won't ever be as stout as it originally was but um then i added these and did boxed it and it is heavy steel 
heavier, a little bit heavier steel. Um, it's going to be close. Um, when I get it welded up, it should be as heavier. It really is heavy anyway. Um, I think it'll work good like that. Um, it won't be pulling in because it's going to have all the support here crossways and it won't, shouldn't be pushing up any either because it's got these in here so it should be okay um won't know until we try it but i think it'll hold um that's everything tacked in i'm gonna turn it up the welder up some now and really weld her in i got the ear pieces mounted on here um i got them tacked on i gotta weld those in uh went ahead and tacked it plate for the cylinder in um now all we gotta do is just weld everything up i'll probably weld it partially up on here and then i'm gonna take it off so i can get to the inside of that channel a little better uh with it off there and take that cylinder out where i really get down in there and weld down these seams on the insides to really put a good bead all the way around it on it so that way it'll hold because there is going to be a lot of force right there because of that cylinder so uh, we'll put some good welds on her. That's it for today, though. Thank y'all for watching. Uh, please comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.